all fruit dealers hope that their fruits become famous. Joseph Scherfe likely never imagined his peach trees would become the most renowned peach orchard in all of history and in Civil War history. But like many Gettysburg civilians in 1863, the war appeared on their doorsteps, their businesses, and their farms, changing their lives and landscapes forever. Scherfe purchased his land along the Emmitsburg Road from his father in 1843. During the time of the battle, the property consisted of a brick farmhouse, a barn, a canning house, a hog stable, a corn crib, a windmill, a bake oven, a privy, a doghouse, and a woodshed. In addition, the Scherfe family owned a young 16-acre peach orchard that was just starting to flourish in a field across from the farmhouse. More mature trees in a four-acre lot stood on the corner of the wheat field and Emmitsburg roads. These trees became famous as the Battle of Gettysburg raged through what is now commonly referred to as the peach orchard. On the morning of July 1st, 1863, the Scherfe family heard the first shots of the battle northwest of Gettysburg. That night, Union troops moved into positions around the Scherfe farmhouse. By July 2nd, the family remained inside their home until a Union officer urged them to retreat. Joseph's mother-in-law, Catherine, experienced a dangerous encounter that morning. A mini ball fired from the Confederate side on the west had struck the fence, the family later recalled. The family, who consisted of Joseph and his wife Mary, their six children, and Mary's mother, Catherine, decided to flee to the John Trossel farm southeast of Big Round Top, and from there fled to Littlestown for the remainder of the battle. It was a wise decision to flee the farm, as heavy fighting raged around the Scherfe property and house until about 6.30 p.m. on July 2nd, 1863, when Confederates broke through the Union position. The house was riddled with bullets, and the peach orchard became a battlefield. Wounded soldiers crawled into the house and barn for protection until the barn burned to the ground at the height of the fighting, in that fighting, and in that fire in that barn, many soldiers from the 114th Pennsylvania Call of Zouaves burned alive. Today, they can be found as unknown soldiers in the unknown section of the cemetery listed as unknown Zouaves. Joseph Surfy returned to a home on July 6, 1863, to a house and farm in shambles. He saw bloodstains on the floors and bullet holes inside and outside the house. The roof had several holes from artillery rounds. The dead had been buried in trenches around the yard. Dead horses plagued the property. The peach orchard was practically ruined and most of the young trees had been pulled out or knocked down. The barn and hog stable were burned, the windmill damaged, and several of Scherfe's animals were killed. After the war, the federal law allowed citizens experience damage to file a claim for lost or destroyed property. Joseph filed three claims after 1881, totaling $2,500. He was ultimately denied, in part because the law mandated that damages had to be a result of the Union Army actions. In Joseph's case, the government agents felt that the damage was caused by the Confederate Army Joseph stated in his claim, when we returned to the house, we found about everything gone. The house had been sacked and nothing left. Despite the lack of assistance he received from the government, the Scherfe family replanted and rebuilt 
and for years sold peaches from their orchard, branding them as peaches from the original trees on the battleground. The farm became a popular attraction for Battle of Gettysburg veterans. And according to a member of the 87th Pennsylvania, Miss Sherfy had a wall in her house covered with photos of the soldiers she met that fought on her property. The Sherfies continued to live in the house until Joseph's death of typhoid malaria at the age of 70. This has been the Joseph Sherfy Farm on Gettysburg Historic Walking Tours.